she told me, she's like, it's not an option. Like, it's a demand. That's what your job is. There are times where they would just take what they want. And these mothers don't know. And there's no way they would know. When you first go to the clinic, what you do in STEM Express is you go to the head nurse and you tell them if there's something you need. So let's say that day I needed a certain gestated fetus. So let's say I need a 15 week fetus for some reason. So I go, I'm like, hey, I'm looking for a 15 week fetus today. If, if Could you let your staff know? I was like, oh yeah, we'll let you know. Each procurement tech usually has an assigned clinic that you want to build a relationship with at your Planned Parenthood because you know you have to have really good communication. So Megan was at B Street with Sarah. Jessica had San Jose the Alameda. I had Stockton and Fresno. Fresno was in um, actually an alley. The areas like Fresno where it's dirt cheap and the area is not good. There were so many, so many. I would work for eight hours and there would be 40 something patients. It really wore me down. It's the, the environment, it's, it's morbid. Like you can feel it. You can hear, you can hear screaming. You can hear crying. Like, so they give you a sheet and it's, it's um, everybody for that day who's coming in for an ultrasound, who's coming in for an abortion, medical or late term abortion. And we basically walk around the clinic and make sure that we that we have time, we, we can send them, we take them in the room or meet them in the chair. Some women can, they come in, they do a test and then you find out they're pregnant. Then you can consent them. So pregnancy tests are potential pregnancies, therefore potential specimens. So it's just taking, taking advantage of the opportunities. The, the fetus, the fetal tissues remains is, is a POC, which stands for product of conception. The specimen is what I would obtain from it. So POC, product of conception, specimen is what I would procure. I would set up my laptop, and then you would log into the task page, log into AIM Instant Messenger. You would go get the gestation sheet from the head nurse, and you would see how many opportunities you had on the sheet. So then you would report that. A task page would just list the tissue, where it's to be sent, and then um, the number of specimens and equal. And so we all had access to edit that page. So if there was, I said we needed a liver, 17 weeks, John Hopkins or Stanford, Berkeley, whatever it was, and it said specimen. So if I got that, I would put my initials. So I'd edit it, put one HO. So that way, if we needed one, that's already cleared for that day. So everybody would log in and you would say, oh, there are 24 appointments today, 10 tissue opportunities, eight blood sample opportunities, first patient at eight. So then I would wait for certain girls to come in. I would look for an opportunity to consent. So that would mean like after they go in, they get registered with a nurse, go sit down. That would be a great opportunity for me to, hey, can I talk to you for a second? Come in, shut the door, STEM Express, had a consent form, we'd have to initial, you know, I, I'm certified, I'm donating, I know I'm not going to be reimbursed or um, I'm compensated. I know this is for disease research. I, I'm consent, I've already consented that I am going to get an abortion. Yeah, no. That doesn't happen all the time. Some of these women don't know if they're going to get an abortion. Some don't even, they're not 100% they're gonna get it done. Didn't know a lot about Dr. Berman, this other than he worked for Planned Parenthood. There were actually comments made about him. He had a reputation for going viciously fast. Like if we didn't watch him, we would lose our specimens. It was that fast. If there wasn't a girl in the room, he would get mad. He would pace the hallways if there wasn't something to do. Like, it's like, it's almost like he wanted to do it. And that, that made me really concerned and how fast he was going with these women. And 
I felt bad. Like there was a few times to where if he was working and I had a girl who did not want to get it, but she, you know, she, she felt she had to, I wanted to tell her, do not go to this clinic. When I imagine, because I've seen abortions, I imagine him literally going into the room, lifting the covers, going in, grabbing, and walking out. Like that's how fast it is. It's ridiculous. I was the only person who was a licensed CPT-1, a licensed phlebotomy technician, um, but the other individuals were drawing blood um, in the clinics. The coworkers I had, um, they were just, they would not consent the, the donors. If there was a higher gestation and the technicians needed it, there were times where they would just take what they wanted. And these mothers don't know. And there's no way they would know. There were times where, I remember one time it was the Fresno Clinic and that was the most high volume clinic we have, lots of abortions, lots. And um, I had a very gestated woman that was a lambs patient. So lambs patients, it's a two day process. So they take a certain material, they come in, they insert it into the uterus to expand it, and then you come the next day to take it out so they can extract the fetus. So I consented her, and she said no, and I was, I'm fine with that. I'm not going to press anybody. I'm not gonna consent a girl who's throwing up from the abortion medication. That's not who I am. And uh, she, she said no, and the next day, Jessica came, and she's like, oh, that, you know, that the high gestated girl, did, you have to get her, make sure you get her. I'm like, oh, I already consented her yesterday. She's not comfortable. And she looked at me like, okay, walked out, took her into the room and she came back out and she was hand holding all these tubes. And all I said to her was, what do you say to her to get that blood? She's like, nothing. I'm like, so basically you just went in there and took her blood and you're gonna be taking her fetus without her knowing. So, yeah, I'm not, it's, it's just, that's terrifying. Like, imagine if you were an abortion patient and someone was going in and stealing your baby's parts. And half of these women are already on the edge as it is, you know? So it's, it's just, it's terrible. The women I worked for were cold, cold. It's cold, they don't care. They just wanted their money. They didn't care that the girl was throwing up in the trash can crying um, and even there are times to when the patients would ask me like they would come in and be crying like should I do this should I be doing this and what from my personal view I'm very pro-life and I would tell them like run like go like you'll figure something out you don't want to do this like if you don't want to do this go home and I would get in trouble for that I get in trouble Jessica would say why don't you consent her? Like, because she was crying and throwing up and she didn't even know if she wants to get it done. What'd you say to her? I told her she didn't, if she wasn't comfortable with it, then I'm not gonna do anything. She said, well, that, that was an opportunity you just missed. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell a girl to kill her baby so I can get money. And that's what this company does. It, straight up, that's what this company does. My job was to go there and get blood and tissue parts. Like, it wasn't presented as an option, really. From my boss, the words of Sarah, it's not. Like, she told me, she's like, it's not an option. Like, it's demand. That's what your job is. I said, I'm not gonna draw. I'm not gonna push them over the edge when they're already on the edge. Like, there's a reason why they keep journals in the recovery room. Like, if abortion, abortion was a good thing, there wouldn't be such so much emotional damage from it. End of story. I would take my sample, I'd put it in a tube, I would label it with a specimen sticker, I would take it back to the room, update the task page, put, you know, one or two, how many I got that day, and uh, I'd fill out the paperwork on my computer, print it out at the lab, and that's what I would do all day.
And then at the end of the day, I would put everything in a FedEx package and I would have to drive to a FedEx and drop off the specimen. And the sad thing is people would ask what was in the box and I didn't know what to say. Like, oh, there's, there's dead baby parts in there. 